The Canon EOS C400 is an incredibly versatile camera. Perfect for cinematic shooting, live broadcast, and virtual production. It features a full frame 6K BSI sensor, triple base ISO, organic color reproduction, and 16 stops of dynamic range. The camera also has a faster and more accurate autofocus, including face, eye, head, body, and animal tracking. And here is the best part. I've got one probably before you do. Because when this camera hits the market, we, Skyhoy and Canon in partnership, want you to have remote control from day one with Skyhoy's amazing control panels. The RCP Pro will probably be your go-to remote control panel, likely the best universal RCP on the market. It features an innovative joystick, precise parameter control, and a powerful extendable Linux system that lets you mix and match control over 400 cameras and devices. So let's take a look at that. And first, taking a look at the UI that is used to configure the RCP Pro. It's right here, it's actually connected. It says which IP we can find it on, and I typed that into my web browser here. So we see the local boot screen, which is just that, and now I'll just change over to generic camera control. This is actually, uh, it allows us to add multiple cameras. So we'll just add device here, and we see that ESC 400 is, um, possible to select here. I need an IP address for this one, so I'll just type in uh, whatever I think it might be. Oh, I know, I should know. And then we'll see it's connecting. You may have a username and password, we disabled that in this case, and we are basically ready to go. Uh, just one step more, we need to add it to the camera selector of the RCP, but having done that, we are basically ready. So, now we have camera control, let's just try it out. And the first thing, of course, is adjusting the iris. So we see with the um, joystick, we are able to perfectly control the lens. With the RCP Pro, we will explore a little bit what this controller can do. And um, apart from adjusting the, uh, the iris, we also have pedestal here on the ring, all right? So the pedestal value, it's, uh, it's seen here in this display. And we also find it inside a, a, a exposure. So we have a controller like this one broken up into menus, and these are the menu navigation buttons, and you can go to a second page where we have a function menu that is basically giving you access to triggers and presets over here. Now, we are not gonna go through all of this. I think this is a new camera. We should explore it a little bit, see what is kind of interesting, see how it responds to the interaction that we provide and so on. And uh, if we uh, look at it from this point of view, we have uh, some um, preset related uh, functions that we won't um, spend time on. In this video, we have also triggers, which I assume will be some function buttons you find on the camera, which we can actually remote control trigger here. So you could assign those on the camera itself. We have on-screen menu, and uh, that's a that's an interesting little thing. So with this one, it we can turn it on and off, okay? So we'll see it's now turned off, and now it's turned on again. By using the left and the right, we can uh, move around where this uh, focus uh, indicator field is basically pointed at. And then if um, there's different screen types that you can choose, uh, the one with menu will actually allow us to go into the menu. So if I use the uh, exit key here, then now we are basically navigating the menu of the camera. So that's also, again, very useful on a remote location. First of all, we can disable on all on-screen menus uh, from the RCP, but we can use this to access basically anything inside uh, move further down using uh, this button, then make a pick, uh, execute, and, and so on. I think we'll just exit much of this now because I wanted you to see that it exists. Then we have knee uh, functions that are currently disabled. And when functions are not available for whatever reason, typically because in this case we are probably in some sort of shooting mode that doesn't allow you to set knee, you see that the display will have a little um, forbidden sign. And that indicates this parameter cannot be adjusted by the associated knob as you would normally do. Well, it seems like sharp, uh, sharpness level can actually. And uh, then we can move into color. So here we have the white balance and it's currently at, at auto, but we can um, set it very precisely in Kelvin degrees here. So we can you know, go all the way up to, to like 15,000 Kelvin and all the way down to 2,000 Kelvin. So 
We are probably somewhere around here is fine. We have red and blue gain. We can adjust those values. We can adjust the pedestal, uh, red and blue pedestal. And then again, here we have the uh, the master pedestal that we also had on the ring of the joystick. Of course, you can press the joystick if you want to have joystick override. That would connect you to a router of some sort. Um, and that is something you configure in the UI of uh, Reactor. So we can, let me see what else. Um, maybe we do have, no, we don't have shift levels here. Let's go to exposure. So uh, in exposure, we can, um, we are currently at manual iris. Uh, no wonder we are, we are playing with this one. And we should probably stay there. But I want to show you that you can, uh, in this case, we have a super fine grained iris control with the joystick. That's really, really neat. But we can also choose to, uh, to go in larger steps. So if we disable this one, you see it's set up to half stop. We can select one third stop. And now if you notice what the iris is, it's shown here, it's also shown on the joystick. Then as we are moving the, um, the, the joystick, you see the steps are much bigger. 2.5, F2, F1.8, um, 3.54. Okay, so let's try steps, which is one third. So going from four, we have 3.5, we get 3.2, we have 2.8. So there's like more sort of resolution on the steps at this point by choosing that. And then of course, it's gonna be even more if we enable fine iris, then it's almost totally fluent and uh, just a floating point number. The ND filters are also uh, motorized, so we can um, enable ND filters by using a button here on the controller. That's pretty neat. And then of course, we could actually go into uh, auto iris mode if you want. Uh, you can see that in action if we enable one of the ND filters. It's trying to uh, counter compensate as we do so. Now back on the home screen, the general concept you'll know from our panels is some redundancy because the home screen represents the settings, settings from the other menus, like from exposure and color in this case, that are most likely to be the one you want on the home screen uh, of your controller. But you can reorder that if you want. A quick uh, glance at that is if you go to configuration here, and we pick the configuration we have for this, you'll see that the, the different menus um, is actually available here in a, in a uh, little menu. And then on the home screen, for instance, you could, uh, let me just navigate here a little bit. Then if, if you wanted to change this one, which is currently assigned to white balance mode, you could go back and you could pick from, uh, let me see. Okay, let's just uh, change behavior on this guy. Yes, okay, so you can see that there will be a lot of parameters. That is the XE protocol, which is the one Canon has implemented in all the cool new cameras. That protocol is super, super well designed, is uh, supported by our devices. And uh, out of that one, we are basically implementing every single feature you find in there. And then you can just pick from this menu whatever you want this button to do instead and just pick it. Now, you see that changed immediately immediately on, on the simulation and also on the panel. So that's how you could customize any of the menus that you have here. We have sort of limited that for most cases to be you reshuffling what you find in the various menus of the controller. If you want to go totally rogue, you can also go to a user section and now you can apply your own configuration onto any other button on the RCP. It's an advanced navigation system we have on the RCP where the menu is one thing, but we also have a shift button, etc. So all these layers, they are like main functionality. You get it out of the box. You saw how easy it was for me to just set this one up, pick a configuration, add a camera, boom. You have very advanced uh, functionality, which by the way is also advantageous from the point of view that other cameras will work in the same way. So when you mix and match this camera with a PC camera or something else, then you, you are kind of used to the interaction scheme. But on top of that functionality, that advanced configuration we have made, you can freely design new pages of features. Like if I made like page number one here, just create that and you can make navigation. So if I enter into this page, if I put something on it, like the one that we just uh, picked a moment ago, we actually see that this encode on that one is now available to me. But I can, if I go back to the background page here, I have basically that advanced underlying configuration shining through. So this is how Reactor works. A little sneak peek into how configuration functions. Most of you guys, you'll be super happy to just have that home screen you see right here 
adding cameras and just putting them into the camera selector. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. You can follow us on social media. You can subscribe to our newsletter if you want to receive updates. And uh, below in the description, you can find links to all of that good stuff. Anytime you wish to interact with us, just feel free to reach out to our sales and support team. And they are always super passionate to help you succeed.